Welcome in live to the CACC Network. My name is Chris Del Sordo, and you are watching coverage of your post-university Eagles in conference play here against the Goldie Beacom College Lightning. It's the leadoff hitter, Christian Petrillo, getting us underway this afternoon. Remember, doubleheader today. So two matchups on the agenda for your Eagles. The Goldie Beacom College Lightning team. Solid start to the season, 18 and 11 overall, 4 and 3 in conference, and this is a battle we have going on right now between the sophomore Nick Seaman and the senior Christian Petrillo. Seaman was ahead in the count 0 and 2 through three straight balls, and now you just have a battle of Petrillo, four straight foul balls, and coming up on pitch number 10 to get the con contest started. Breaking ball and it doesn't catch the outside corner. You can see Jimmy Brennan trying his darndest to frame it, but it's going to be Petrillo leading off this game with a walk on 10 pitches. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Del Sordo. Thank you for tuning in to the Nest Network. Watching post-University Eagles coverage live. And remember, you can also watch all of our games live on YouTube at Go Post Eagles. Well... Seaman couldn't get the outside corner, but he gets the inside corner to get us started against Braden Coleman'sberger, the two-hole hitter in the lineup for the Lightning. This is a team that hits the ball hard. This one's flared up into no man's land. It's going to be a tough play, and it drops in front of the right fielder, Michael Pavelcheck. Hunter Keller probably had the best bead on the baseball there, and that one was falling fast. It's a big outfield here at Municipal Stadium, and it drops in. And so Pavelcheck... Uh, couldn't get to it. Coleman'sberger coming in, batting 350. One of two players, three players to start and play in every game so far this season for the Lightning. And that is hit number 36 on the season with that little bloop shot in the right field. So trouble early here for Nick Seaman. Runners on first and second, one via walk, one via hit. No outs. Garrett Musi. The dangerous three-hole hitter, he plays first, swinging first pitch, gets right under this and pops it straight back. And you can see a bit of a wry smile there on the face of number 55. He's sitting on a pitch to drive, and he has a great opportunity to give Goldie Beacom an early lead this afternoon. Musi, the hottest hitter on the team, maybe the hottest hitter in the CACC. So they're going to try and test him here as Seaman. Another one on the inside corner. That one doesn't catch it. In 24 games, he started all of them. Garrett Musi batting 433, eight doubles, seven home runs, and 24 runs batted in. So to call him a threat at the plate, that's an understatement. This one's shot in the right field. Great read from Pavelcheck, and they're not going to test the arm. He gets there in time. Quick throw over to third, and the runner, Petrillo, he's a fast runner, but he will have to hold. The wind's blowing out to right today. Musi didn't get a lot on that one. That In, in other uh, predicaments, that ball might drop down, but the wind kept it up there in time for Pavelcheck to make the out. First out of the inning, and now Darren Miller, the cleanup hitter, up next. Miller in his senior season. He's a transfer from in Division II, a Pennsylvania native. Went to Millersville University before transferring down to Goldie Beacom. Goldie Beacom College in Wilmington, Delaware, on the north side of town, actually pretty close to the Pennsylvania border. That's an area that I'm from and I grew up in right now. And Goldie Beacom, really powerful sports program in the recent years. They have a solid basketball team down there as well. And this baseball team, right now, outside of the top 20 in two of the major three polls, they snuck in at number 20 in the third, but a team with... Ratings varied right now, has everyone's attention. One of, if not, the favorite teams in the CACC this season. And Seaman, to his credit, after allowing the first two batters on, he's out in front of Miller right now, ahead in the count one and two. It's actually post-university, off to the better start in CACC conference play. Goldie Beacom, oh, big swing. Was it tipped? No, it was not. So the strikeout swinging by Miller. It is a stolen base, though, as Petrillo is able to steal third. I think Seaman, he'll take that trade, getting the strikeout on Miller. You do have to worry about the wild pitch or the pass ball and a speedy runner in Petrillo, but there are two outs now with runners on the corners. The five-hole hitter, Kyle Walker, up next here for Goldie Beacom College. Also a senior, local kid from Wilmington, Delaware, and went to Conrad High School. So keeping it in the family, staying in town. 
and Seaman trying to get him out in front with an off-speed pitch for Kyle Walker. Walker is fifth on the team in average, and actually there's a bit of a drop-off. Coleman'sberger is one of their core four, four different everyday hitters batting 350 or higher. Walker is number five, hitting 294, and he's even back out in the count now at one and one. But no slouch in the batter's box. 22 RBI on the season, and he's third on the team with 30 hits on the year. Looking for a big clutch one for number 31, and he hits this one deep down the right field line. It's tailing. He got a lot of that, and the wind's blowing out, but it does blow it foul. And so now Nick Seaman, one strike away from getting himself out of a slight jam. He does have runners on the corners. If you're just joining us, he was ahead of Christian Petrillo, the leadoff hitter, 0-2, before walking him on 10 pitches. The next pitch was hitting the right field for a single. That is a swing and a miss, and Nick Seaman does get himself out of trouble. He K's Darren Miller. And Kyle Walker consecutively takes just eight pitches to do it. And it took a long time to get there, but the Eagles are out at the top of the first and will head to the bottom, scoreless, nothing, nothing. We'll be back with more after this on the Nest Network. quieter than normal no okay off on 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 perfect Welcome back into Municipal Stadium. It was a fairly tough go of it for Nick Seaman in the first inning, but he escapes unscathed, allowing Christian Petrillo on with a 10-pitch walk, allowing Braden Coleman'sberger to follow up right after that with a single in the right field, but then he buckles down. Fall behind in the count to Garrett Musi, gets him to fly out to Pavelcheck in right, and then back-to-back -back Ks of Darren Miller and Kyle Walker get the Eagles out of trouble. Now, if you're just joining us, this is a huge conference doubleheader today at Municipal Stadium. The Eagles, 15-14 and 14 on the season. Three games behind the Goldie Beacom College Lightning and overall win-loss, the Lightning 18-11. and 11. But post, 7-1 and one through their first eight conference games, whereas GBC, 4-3. and three. And remember, this was a Goldie Beacon team projected to finish at the top of the CACC. And up until this week, we're across the board in the national rankings in the top 20. They've fallen out of two of those three rankings, so we can throw the RV next to their name, but they're in a little bit, a minor downspell right now, and this is a huge opportunity for Post University to keep the good times rolling here, stay above 500, and really start to space out some distance in the CACC. The Eagles have won their last five contests, including two home shutouts, here against Chestnut Hill College and three consecutive road, technically, road wins against Dominican University. So now it's Michael Pavelchak leading us off here. He made a big play in the third batter of the inning to track down a ball in right. And look at this high hop on the tough grass infield. And Pavelchak, one of the team's best hitters, in fact, he leads the team in average, gets another base hit and will set the table. That is base hit number 39 on the year for Michael Pavelchak. He wasted no time first pitch swinging. And it will bring up Evan Cornwall with a quick chance to do some damage here. Cornwall, a senior from Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Way up there in North Jersey towards Ramapo. 
Lays down a bunt. Is this going to stay fair? Yes, it does. Good decision by the catcher, Harkins, to jump on it because he realized that ball wasn't going to go foul. But it is a sacrifice bunt from Cornwell. It moves Pavelchak over to second. And the Eagles, with just one out, have a runner in scoring position in the form of the big first baseman, Chris Corchado. Corchado on the season, a 340 hitter. Four doubles, second on the team with 33 base hits, and he has the speedy Michael Pavelchak on at second. The Lightning do appear to be holding Pavelchak on. This one right over the heart of the plate, and it's lined into right field on the first pitch. It took a late jump from Pavelchak because it was almost caught by Musi, the first baseman. So the throw comes in quickly from Matt Benner, and it does keep Pavelchak at third. But two base hits here to start the bottom of the first, and it's runners on the corners with one out. This is the same scenario we saw for Goldie Beacon back in the top half of the first. And here's the cleanup hitter, Jimmy Brennan, with a chance to do some damage. Both those base hits just... Nothing over the top. Justin Jump is the pitcher this afternoon for the Lightning. He's making his eighth start, four and two in six decisions across his prior seven starts. An elevated ERA, 4.46, but he's shown the ability to get himself out of trouble. And so Brennan has a huge opportunity here to put him in some early trouble and an off-speed pitch from Jump to get Brennan started. It was right over the heart of the plate. He's well out in front, and he's behind in the count 0-1. Jimmy, a junior from Newton, New Jersey. Went to Pope John the 23rd. 0-1 pitch. Slaps at it, and they were holding the runner on at first, so it finds the gap. Three early base hits, and it's an RBI for Jimmy Brennan to get us started scoring Pavelchak. Station to station baseball as Corchado goes to second. But for Jimmy Brennan, his 16th RBI of the season and the third ground ball single in the bottom of the first. DJ Karen, the left fielder, now up with a chance, potentially, at a crooked number. Runners on first and second with one out. Eagles leading one to nothing. Pavelcheck scoring on the Jimmy Brennan base hit. And here's our first pitch to DJ Karen. Now Justin Jump. Looks like he might have sped up his mechanics a little bit on that pitch. Kind of pulled it out of the hand. Misses low and away. DJ, a grad student. It's funny, in comparison to some of the other schools in the CACC, Post does not have that many Connecticut residents on its roster. DJ is one of them. He's from Branford, Connecticut. Actually, a transfer up. He started his career at D3 Nichols College up the road in Dudley, Massachusetts, and made the step up to Division II and has rewarded the Eagles ever since joining campus. He has played in all 30 games this season, leading the team in ABs. This is his 116th at bat. And he also leads the team in base hits so far with 37. So what a luxury to have down in the five spot. And he has runners on first and second. And that is a well-located pitch from Justin Jump. Puts him ahead in the count now, one and two. Karen has struck out his fair share, 21 Ks in his 115 ABs, so might change the approach here ever so more defensively as Justin Jump waits. Harkins gets the sign. Jump comes in. Wow, he had Karen out in front on all three of those breaking pitches, and he gets himself a big strikeout back as he fans DJ Karen. You saw that was how the first inning ended for uh, Seaman, pardon me, in the top of the first, he had runners on the corners with one out. Back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts. It's going to be a tough task for Justin Jump to do that here. He has a fellow Justin in the batter's box across from him in the form of Justin Rivera. Eagles leading one to nothing. And another pitch located well on the outside corner. The umpire calls that a strike anyway. I think unprofessional opinion, but I think Rivera also went around, and so that was well located there for Justin Jump. These clouds starting to burn off here, the sun kind of creeping through, and it 
sneakily is becoming a pretty nice baseball weather day out here at Municipal Stadium. That one. Yes, they say Rivera goes as that one snapped off the breaking ball. So all of a sudden, jump, it wasn't there or, or it might have just been hanging to start the bottom of the first. Now he's shown great bite and great control on these breaking pitches and has Rivera behind in the count 0-2. Will we see a similar imprint as the top of the first? Can Justin Jump get out of trouble? The 0-2 pitch, frame job, oh, but give it to him. That was held on the outside corner beautifully by Nick Harkins, and just like Nick Seaman in the top of the first, Justin Jump recovers and gets himself out of trouble in the bottom of the first. But the Eagles push one across on three hits. We'll head to the top of the second inning with the score, Eagles 1, Lightning 2. Zero, do up for Goldie Beacom, Anthony Charles, De Nick Harkins, and Demetrius Johnson. So welcome back in to Municipal Stadium. Here as we get started in the top of the second inning, and Anthony Charles, the big left-handed designated hitter for the Lightning, gets that A-B started with a huge swing and a miss. It's the Eagles leading 1-0. Both of these innings had kind of mirror looks to them. Goldie Beacon... <clears throat> Pardon me, Goldie Beacom was able to get runners on first and third with one out, but no runs pushed across before Nick Seaman settled down and struck out Darren Miller and Kyle Walker back-to-back. -back. In the bottom of the first, similar story. Eagles were able to get Pavelcheck and Corchado on the corners with one out. Jimmy Brennan, the big blow, a base hit into right field to score Pavelcheck. Then back-to-back -back strikeouts from Karen and Rivera got Justin Jump out of trouble. Seaman with a 2-2 pitch, tried to spin that one off the outside quarter and have it catch back in, misses away, and so the count goes full here to Anthony Charles. Seaman working so quickly on the mound. That one misses low, and so patience for Charles at the dish. At one point, he was behind in the count, one and two, but Seaman with three straight balls has Charles on. On six pitches. This was how Nick Seaman started off his top of the first, walking Christian Petrillo. Now it's the catcher, Nick Harkins, the seven-hole hitter. With a chance to spark this rally a little bit. Harkins not necessarily the full-time catcher. This is the 30th game of the season for Goldie Beacom, and he is playing in his 14th. He started in every game he's appeared in. Solid numbers for a player that's right on the outside of the everyday starting lineup. And look at this high chopper. Well played by Jimmy Brennan. The second he saw that that ball was flirting with staying in play, got the glove to it, and threw it foul and towards his own dugout. So that will be a rather dramatic strike one to bring us back even. Harkins was busting it out of the batter's box on that foul ball, so he's finally back in. Nick Jr., 
out of Newark, Delaware. Runner goes, but this one's hit right to the shortstop. They're not going to be able to turn two, but a play handled by Evan Cornwell and well executed, I mean half well executed, but it's what they needed on the hit and run. You avoid the double play. Charles is in a scoring position, and it's just one out for Demetrius Johnson. So Harkins grounds out to short. Anthony Charles advances to second on the play. And Demetrius Johnson up for the Lightning. Seaman catches the outside corner. You can see Johnson showing the slightest bit of emotion there. He didn't necessarily like that call. I, though, speaking for the rest of us in the press box here, I'm a fan of the umpire strike zone right now. It's big and kind of everything on the outside corner he's giving to the pitchers. So, you know... Easier said than done, me being the broadcaster and saying this, but if you want to approach it this way, the hitters can adjust to the bigger strike zone. It's much he it's much harder to go back the other way. Nothing you could do there on that pitch. It misses well inside and it evens the count back out at one and one. Seaman delivers. That one misses just low. You could see Barrett try and give it a low frame job. But now Demetrius Johnson sitting pretty ahead in the count two and one. A South Jersey resident, Demetrius is from Glassboro, went to Delsey High School. Takes that one over the outside corner, and so Demetrius Johnson victimized right now by the outer half of the plate. He's played in every game so far for Golden Be Goldie Beacom. He has only come off the bench in one, and he is a terror if he reaches Bates safely. 15 of 15 in stolen bases on the year. And even down there at the bottom of the lineup, 30 total bases collected and 24 runs scored. So it speaks to Goldie Beacom's overall talent as a team, 18 and 11. Well, you have that by having a very capable hitter in the bottom of the order. And that one does miss outside. And so Seaman, he's looked good in spurts, but he's had trouble with control early. He has... Two runners on now, both via the base on balls. And it's down to the bottom of the order, but Matt Benner, a big opportunity here with one out and runners on first and second. Extra difficult for Nick Seaman is that all three of the walks he has issued so far in this contest, he has gotten two strikes on the batter, so it just extends his night that much farther. Both runners going, and that is... Just a perfectly executed double steal. You knew about the speed at first, Johnson, but in order to unlock that, you need a speedy runner. And the lead runner, Anthony Charles, also picking them up and putting them down. So that's going to be the 16th stolen base on the season for Johnson. The 10th for Charles. Bit of a late swing there from Benner, and he fouls that one off for the second strike. Well, the double steal, it didn't seem to affect Nick Seaman that much. He, he wasn't ready for it, and, it, you know, credit where credit's due, it, it hasn't really phased him. Just peppers in another strike here. A chance to put away better. Breaking ball? Yes, he got him looking. Strike three. It was a slow curve, and in slow motion, it seemed like it just was able to break in over the inner corner of the plate. Well, he's making it difficult on himself, folks, but another opportunity for Nick Seaman to pitch himself out of trouble. He's going to need to do it again on consecutive outs in the latter half. Petrillo first pitch swinging, fouls it off late, and that's going to feel good for Nick Seaman ahead in the count 0-1. Nick getting this start, it is his second start of the year. Pop up. Oh, this is going to test the second baseman. Going back on it, Hunter Keller. He gets called off by Pavelcheck, who comes and puts the squeeze on it. A tough play in no man's land, but the right fielder, Michael Pavelcheck, covering the ground needed. For the second time, runners in dangerous spots, and Seaman gets out of a jam. We'll head to the bottom of the second. The score right where it was. Eagles 1, Lightning nothing.
We're back here at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. My name is Chris Del Sordo. You are tuning in to Post University Sports on the Nest Network, on the CACC Network, and you can view all of our games live on YouTube at Go Post Eagles. The Eagles leading one to nothing. Here in the bottom of the second, leading us off is the designated hitter Jalen Kelly, and he gets hit. Well, that's a great way to start the bottom half of the inning is that one just, and it barely hits him. I mean, it grazes the backside of the jersey. I think it plucked the back corner of the number five there on the 58 of Kelly's jersey. But one pitch, one base runner, and now Hunter Keller, a big opportunity for the junior out of Oxford, Connecticut. Keller has only missed one game this season, and he started 26 of the 29 games that he has now played in for the Eagles. Underwhelming batting average coming into this AB at 167 on the season. And that one does dot the outside corner. Justin Jump on the mound for Goldie Beacom. He did allow one run on three hits, but he got himself out of the inning in just 12 pitches. So put the ball in a spot to be put in play. And once again, holding that theme, he's fighting the strike zone here ahead of Hunter Keller in the count 0-2. Throw back over to first, trying to catch Kelly napping. Can't do it. He's back. Keller has only struck out nine times on the season. He's been able to put the ball into play. It's just it's just found leather out there. The 0-2 pitch again. That one just, just too far off the plate. I'll be honest, with the strike zone that this umpire has been giving us to start off the contest here, kind of thought he might have even given that one, but Harkins, the catcher, didn't really spend any effort trying to frame that one and keep it in play. And so it is the AB's first ball. Here's the one-two pitch. Off-speed one. It's going to be a tough play. Good hop read by the third baseman, Miller. And they do get the lead runner out at second, but the subsequent throw goes out of play. And so we're right back to where we started from. Keller is going to be able to advance to second. He reaches safely on the fielder's choice, advances to second on the throwing error from the shortstop, and even shows off the arm there trying to throw off, trying to throw the wrist guard to his first base coach. And so Kelly, the lead runner, is out, but Keller now on to second, and you do have an eagle in scoring position with one out, as we are to the nine hole hitter, the center fielder, Danny Gill. First pitch coming from Justin Jump, and he had Gill tied up there, a little haphazard swing. The barrel goes around, and Gill starts this A-B behind in the count, 0-1. A Southern California resident, Danny Gill from Eastvale, and he went to West Los Angeles Community College before making it out here to New England. So using baseball as an opportunity to see the country is number two, Danny Gill, and a good eye right there has him out in front of Justin Jump now, 2-0. and Gill started and played in every game so far. This is his 89th at-bat of the season. Has 14 hits. Three of those 14 hits are doubles. And six RBI. Two and one pitch to Gill. Tries to lay the bunt down, and just like we saw from Brennan back in the top of the second, big play by the catcher Harkins there. Right in front of us is that ball bunted foul, and it's a firm field here at Municipal Stadium. So, smart play. It behooves every catcher to touch that ball as quickly as possible if it's in foul territory. Don't give it the opportunity to roll fair. You have a speedy runner in Gill. You have a speedy runner on second in Keller. And a 1-2 pitch coming. And a big swing and a big miss from Danny Gill. That is the third strikeout as well for Justin Jump. And there's still an eagle in scoring position, but it's going to take Michael Pavelcheck in the clutch to bring him in. Pavelcheck scored this game's lone run. He singled to center field back on the first pitch of the bottom of the first. Quickly came around after a Jimmy Brennan RBI base hit. Three strikeouts so far for Justin Jump. Gill and Karen have gone down swinging. Struck out Rivera looking. 
Easy play to the second baseman, Kyle Walker. He makes the throw to Musi, and that will do it. The leadoff runner reaches safely. The second hitter ends up getting the second, but the Eagles leave one on. We head to the top of the third inning. The score remaining, Eagles 1, Lightning 0. More right after this break on the Nest Network. You are watching Post-University Sports on the CACC Network. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. My name is Chris Del Sordo, and you are tuning in to the Nest Network, post-university sports, live on the CACC Network. And remember, you can watch every post-university sporting event live on YouTube at Go Post Eagles. Nick Sieben settling in here to get us started with the top of the third inning, and that is an unfriendly greeting off the bat of Braden Coleman'sberger. Laced down the left field line, it's... Covered quickly by DJ Karen, but his throw in, not nearly in time. And Coleman'sberger, who singled back in the top of the first, two for two. He's halfway to a cycle now, doubling down the left field line. Garrett Musi back up. Musi, as I mentioned, just astronomical numbers coming into play today. 433 before his first A.B., he was kind of robbed out in right field as he sent one in that was falling fast in front of the right fielder, Michael Pavelchak, but he was able to get on his horse and squeeze it in time. And if that ball drops in, it might have scored Petrillo right then and there. Instead, kept him on base paths. The next two batters struck out swinging, and Seaman was able to get himself out of the jam. In a similar spot here, that one would have been trouble as it was roped down the left field line, but unlike... That ball hit by Coleman'sberger. It is about a foot foul. And Nick Seaman ahead of the count now, 0-2. Seaman has surrendered two hits, and he's walked three batters, but he has struck out three. Whereas it took Justin Jump just 21 pitches to get across innings one and two, Nick Seaman with 38-19 in both innings number one and two, getting us started here in the third. Musi, he's putting bat to ball. But he's not straightening it out, and so we will get another 0-2 pitch coming here from Nick Seaman. O2 pitch coming, and they just can't paint the corner. Back in the first inning, we saw a lot of borderline pitches go by way of the hitter. But as this game has slowed down a little bit, we've seen the strike zone probably appropriately shrink, shrink with it. So we'll do it again. This is the sixth pitch of this 0-2 at bat. Pardon me, 1-2 at bat. And that one also similarly misses low and away. Musi, one of the reasons that you can get a 433 average is showing a patient, discerning eye. And he leads the team unsurprisingly and walks with 16 of them. This is the jam shot on a full swing. Beautiful read by Evan Cornwell. He has to take two steps back and he puts the squeeze on it. So a pop-out for Garrett Musi. There have been pitches over the plate for Big 55 to hit. Hasn't done enough with it. And it will bring up the third baseman, Darren Miller. Miller with the game's first strikeout. After Seaman had to deal with runners on the corners with one out. Now Miller, big swing, and it sends Gill back in center field. He coasts back a couple more steps and puts the squeeze on it about 10 feet in front of the warning track. Plenty of room there for Coleman's burger to advance, and he will do that. So it's a sack fly for Miller 
advancing Colemansberger to third, but another opportunity here for Nick Seaman to get himself out of trouble. For the third inning in a row, he's going to need to do it with a runner on third, and it's back up to the second baseman, Kyle Walker. Walker followed up Miller's strikeout with a swinging strikeout of his own. And there we go. We're right back out to an expanded strike zone, it looks like, as that one does catch the outside corner. This is, has to feel good for Nick Seaman. He's only on pitch number 12 right now in this half of the inning. Remember, it took him 19 apiece to get out of each of the first two. Spoils that one, so the count goes back even to Kyle Walker. Coming into the game today, hitting 294. That one's right there, dotting the outside black, catching the up-and-out corner. And Nick Seaman, dialed in here in inning number three, has the speedster Colemansberger leading off third, but he's one strike away from getting out of trouble again. The one-two pitch. No, that one misses up and away. Trying to go back to the, back to the well, if you will, back to the honeypot, knowing that this ump has had no problem giving the outside corner. Let's see here. He might try and bust Walker with something inside. Walker has struck out 12 times on the season. Puts this one in play. It's going to be a tough play for Cornwell, and he gets Walker by a step. And so the Eagles, with some great defense from their shortstop, Evan Cornwell, keep the Lightning scoreless. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning. Stop me if you've heard this before. Eagles 1, Lightning 0. And we are back here at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. My name is Chris Del Sordo, and you are tuned in to the Nest Network. Your post-University Eagles looking for win number 16 in game number 30, but conference win number 8 out of 9, leading as we start off the bottom of the third, up 1 to nothing. Leading us off here, Evan Cornwell. We saw the shortstop make two impressive putouts in the top of the third, and he's going to try and answer the bell offensively and dinks one over the head of the third baseman, running hard out of the box. It's going to be a throw-in, play at second, and he's in there safely. Evan Cornwell with a double. I mean, it's going to count as a line drive down the left field line. That was a bloop shot, folks, off the end of the bat over the third baseman, Darren Miller, dropping in front of the left fielder, Demetrius Johnson, and barely on the outfield grass. And by the time Johnson gets to it, he's not all that far from second base himself, but Cornwall, Cornwell, pardon me, busting it out of the box. And for Evan Cornwell, his 28th hit of the season and his seventh double. Now Corchado, the big, imposing left-handed batter, back up with a runner in scoring position. He was part of that, that run scoring effort in the bottom of the first. He scored, uh, hit the second of three base hits. He was ultimately stranded on third to end the inning, but it's the reason the Eagles are up one to nothing right now, and he can do some damage himself. Breaking ball from jump, and that one just barely misses on the inside corner. Justin Jump, his outing, much different than Nick Seaman. He threw 
just 22 pitches to get himself out of the first two innings. That's 20 less than it took Nick Seaman. Corchado, big rip. It sends the right fielder back. Better looks over his head. At the wall. It's off the base of the wall. Cordwell didn't get a good jump, but he's still going to score easily. Corchado holds it second. This is a huge outfield at Municipal Stadium, and that one tested it. Deep double off the wall in right center field, and the Eagles leading 2 to nothing. So how about that? We were playing baseball station to station. A lot of singles, and all of a sudden, a leadoff double followed by another one. And the Eagles sitting pretty now up 2 to nothing. Already five hits against Justin Jump, and still no outs, and the cleanup hitter Jimmy Brennan up. Brennan with an RBI single in the bottom of the first inning. That gave Post the lead that they are still enjoying. Pavelcheck singled. Cornwall with a sack bunt got Pavelcheck to second. Corchado singled. They had runners on the corners. And then just a, a, a slap hit, base hit, between the right side of the infield. Let's see. Will there be enough time here to send Corchada? No, it was a quick read by Matt Benner and a quick squeeze and a pretty solid throw in as well. And Corchado wisely holds it second. So Brennan's able to put bat to ball, but not enough bat to ball. He flies out on a lazy one to right field. Corchado holds it second. And that's the first out of the inning for the Lightning. It brings up DJ Karen. Karen had a long at bat. After Brennan singled in the first run of the game back in the bottom of the first inning, it ultimately ended with him striking out. Good eye for the grad student out of Branford, Connecticut there. He takes that one. Low and in. Karen only nine walks so far on the season. An impressive 322 average in spite of only reaching via base on balls nine times. We've already seen him strike out once today. There's a big swing and miss on a ball. Probably about seven, eight inches off the plate. And so he gives Justin Jump a free one right there to even the count back out at one and one. This has got to be the weirdest outing for Justin Jump imaginable. He has struck out three hitters. He hasn't walked anyone. But he's behind in the game two to nothing. And yet he's only thrown, well, let's see... I, he's barely over 30 pitches. I mean, he's been peppering the strike zone. He's been working quickly. But yet he's got two more huge ABs in front of him here. He is in front of Karen. One and two. Jump the senior out of Mount Pleasant High School. That one's laced to center field. And it gets by the diving center fielder, Petrillo. And uh oh Karen can run. And this is a deep wall. Corchado's going to score. Karen to third. No one's covering third, and the throw gets past the third baseman, and Karen scores, sliding in safe. I don't think that's going to count as an inside-the-park home run, but it is a loud and proud RBI triple for DJ Karen, and he comes across on the throwing error. Nobody covering third. Karen slides in safely, and the Eagles leading 4 to nothing. What a timely hit for DJ Karen as Justin Jump looked like he might have been able to pull himself a little Houdini, a little David Copperfield, and get out of that jam. Remember, he was greeted by a leadoff double right down the left field line on a bloop shot from Cornwell. Then Corchado barreled him up and hit one off the wall in deep right center field. That extended the lead to 2 to nothing. Corchado sitting there at second base, and Karen, a line drive right at Petrillo, he did everything he could. He dives, can't make the catch. It gets behind him. It's a big outfield. It's only 400 to straightaway center field. But they decide to throw the ball to third. I don't think there would have been a tag play at third anyway. And with no one covering, it allows Karen to come right around and score. And so, post-university, all of a sudden, up four to nothing. And now Rivera fists one. It goes right to Musi for a quick out number two. But that shows you the game can change. I mean, that was quicker than a drop of a hat. That was a blade of grass. Petrillo was that close to making the diving catch, and he could have very well doubled up Corchado. Instead, it's a 4 nothing game. 
and Jalen Kelly back in the dish for the Eagles. Well, Justin Jung throwing with some venom now. As once again, I mean, he was an inch away from getting not out of the inning, but out of the jam that was in front of him. Instead, Petrillo can't make the catch. Ball to the wall. No one covering third. And now jump. I mean, he's working just as quickly as he has had all afternoon. But can't help but think this might be in his head a little bit now as he misses this one inside to Kelly. And the count one and one. Just a wild play to take us to four to nothing as Kelly with a big swing right there. Kelly, a very, very solid 241 average. He's playing in his 13th game, making his 11th start. Still looking for his first RBI of the campaign. Wow, out in front of this one and whacks it, turns on it. That gets into the Eagles' dugout in one of those little openings there and Nobody reacting too harshly, so I think everyone survived that okay. One and two. Jump with a chance to get out of trouble, but he's already surrendered three runs this inning, and that'll get him out of it. Beautiful sweeping breaking ball, and Kelly goes down looking. But three runs scored by the Eagles, thanks to two doubles and a big triple from DJ Kerr, and we head to the top of the fourth. The Eagles cruising right along in this CACC game one, leading the Goldie Beacom College Lightning four to nothing. We are in the top of the fourth, and these days have taken really a fork in the road as far as each pitcher is concerned. You can see Nick Seaman right there rather dialed in as he pulls the string on a breaking ball, and he's out in front of the designated hitter, Anthony Charles, here to lead off the top of the fourth. Another big swing and a foul tip has Nick Seaman cruising. Now ahead in the count, 0-2. So Nick Seaman has thrown three strikeouts so far today. No runs surrendered, though, but he has... Get this, folks. He has ended all three top halves of the inning with runners stranded on third. Now, he was able to strike himself out of trouble in the first, use a combination of Ks and good defense in the second, and in the top of the third, it was all good defense, specifically the shortstop, Evan Cornwall bailing him out on both an impressive pop-out catch and a long throw across the diamond. Count is even to Charles. Huge swing on that one. He'll foul it over our press box, over the snack stand. Uh, that one might have gotten onto Watertown Avenue behind us here. Big swing, a lot of contact, but he can't straighten it out. And now this is a very good hitter. 368 on the season, a chance to put him away, and that defensive swing just barely gets a piece of it to keep Charles alive. Charles did walk to lead off the top of the second inning. He was stranded on third. Siemens 2-2 pitch, that one. Probably would have crossed over the plate low. It's fouled off by Charles, and once again, we'll keep it at 2-2. Two and two. 
It took Nick Seaman 19 pitches to get out of the first and second inning. Just 14 to get out of the third. Probably still a fairly elevated pitch count, but he's hitting his marks there as he gets Anthony Charles swinging. Folks, that is a 368 hitter who came into action today with three dingers and 14 RBIs. That's just his 12th K of the season, and Seaman sits him down. So Nick Harkins, the catcher, he grounded out to Cornwell his first time up. He takes that one outside for a ball. It's 1-0. and Once again, folks, thanks for joining us here today at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut, as you are watching the sophomore Nick Seaman perhaps enjoy a bit of a coming out party right now. Nick from Valley Cottage, New York, went to Flodar Tech. He's now behind to the catcher Nick Harkins, 2-1. and one. But Nick so far, only two hits allowed. He has walked three. He struck out four. That one misses away, and so Harkins it would be hard-pressed to think that he's going to get the green light here. You need base runners in a bad way right now if you're Goldie Beacom. Remember, we're in a conference doubleheader. So this is only going to be a seven-inning game. Same story for game number two. And Harkins does oblige. It is the fourth walk surrendered by Nick Seaman. And with one out, it's Demetrius Johnson, the eight-hole hitter. Johnson was in a, an extended duel with Seaman back in the top of the second inning and ultimately did walk on seven pitches. Seaman not too phased from that walk the first go around. He tries to get Johnson to chase on a first pitch ball. Demetrius keeps the bat on his shoulder. And so Johnson ahead in the count 1-0. and That one also misses up and in. And how quickly a game can, can kind of turn on its head. After Seaman struck out Anthony Charles, you had to think, okay, he's cruising along. But it's six consecutive balls thrown on the mound for Nick Seaman. Johnson gets the green light and pops this one up a mile. It's going to be a play for Keller. No, he's called off by Pavelcheck, And that's the second time we've seen Pavelcheck really have to cover some ground here. The wind is blowing out to right field today. So I thought that ball was a play for the second baseman, Keller. It ultimately gets blown out into right field. Pavelcheck makes the catch. And we're down to the nine-hole hitter, Matt Benner. Benner struck out looking his first time up, and perhaps right there you could see trying to eliminate that fate. Big cut comes up empty. Benner about as productive of a hitter as you can get down there in the nine hole. He's behind in the count now 0-2. But coming into action today, this is going to be his 23rd game played in on the season, his 16th start, a 250 hitter. Oh, Seaman thought he painted the outside corner there. Admittedly, I did too, and so did the catcher, Jimmy Brennan, it looked like. The umpire doesn't give the outside corner, and so Seaman going to do it again. Remember, he struck out four. He's also walked four as well, and they give it to him that time. Nick Seaman rolling right along, still scoreless through four innings of work, and he has just struck out his fifth batter. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth with the Eagles still leading. They're up four to nothing. More after this on the Nest Network. You are watching Post-University Athletics on the CACC Network.
Well, we are back here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and a surprising sight, Justin Jump back on the bump for the Lightning of Goldie Beacom College. He's going to try and ride this out and maybe hope that there's a comeback that next trip around the batting order. He's already surrendered four runs across three innings of work. He hasn't walked anyone, and he has struck out four, but he has surrendered six hits. So he's finding the strike zone, but so are the Eagles. And a big opportunity here for Hunter Keller to get another quick start at the dish. Big swing, over swing, and instead Keller quickly behind 0-2. Jump mentioned 4-2 on the season. The leading innings eater has the most innings pitched for Goldie Beacom. Over 36, 36.1 coming into action today. Keller fights that one off and fouls it into the seats down the right field line here at Municipal Stadium. But expecting just really like ace work, Nate Miller, the other go-to staff member for Goldie Beacom, he's 4-1 and one in his five starts with a 1.17 ERA, but Justin Jump very much second in line, and the Eagles not, not hitting him out of the ballpark, but hitting him around the yard a little bit here. And with this being a seven-inning game, you're already past the halfway point. So kind of surprising to see Goldie Beacom thinking that their best chance is riding the right arm of number 36. Big swing from Keller. Chops it to the third baseman, Darren Miller. Throw across the diamond. It's a good one. And he gets Keller by about three steps. So the one thing Justin Jump has been doing well has been limiting the length of the ABs. It was a 20-pitch inning for him. Or no, an 18-pitch inning for him in the third. But even then, I mean, he surrendered three runs and got out of there on just 18 pitches. So he's still under 50 after having already gone three and a third. Down to the nine hole. And Danny Gill up for his second AB of the day for the Eagles. Gill struck out swinging on four pitches. The difference has been runners left on base. Just two stranded so far for Post University. Those were both back in the bottom of the first. Since then, they've plated what they've placed. Two LOB, but six runners left on base across four innings of work already for Goldie Beacom. And that's it's got to be extra painful when you see the zero next to their name. That's the second... Pardon me, I thought that that was strike three. Strike number two against Danny Gill. Gill, such a plus player defensively out there in center field. Trying to contribute with the bat here this afternoon. The 2-2 pitch from Jump, that one's hammered. Deep hop for Coleman'sberger, and he gets the play by a step. He was going to have to backhand it regardless. The ball hit the dirt and just kind of came back up and into the body of Coleman'sberger. Made it that much harder of a play, but he stays solid and gets Gill by a couple of steps. And so Keller... Not robbed, but done in by an impressive throw by Miller. Gill, done in by an impressive throw by Coleman'sberger. And now we're back to the top of the order and Michael Pavelcheck. But he sees empty bases all around him. And two outs on the scoreboard. So Justin jumped to his credit as he dots that one on the outside corner. Doing everything he can to keep himself in the game. I, I mentioned when he came in... It was surprising to see, to start this fourth inning, except for the fact that he only threw 48 pitches. And that right there is just the 11th here in the fourth. Misses outside. But credit to Justin Jump at this point. I mean, if he if he feels like he, he has what he needs on these Eagles the third trip through the, through the order, he's at a pitch count where he can definitely go the rest of the way in this a seven-inning game. He spoils that one inside. So Pavelchuk now... Pavelcheck ahead in the count, 2 and 1. 24 walks on the season. The next closest is Danny Gill with 15. The next closest after that is Chris Corchado with 11. So it's been a special disciplined eye for Pavelcheck. A late swing as that one looks like it might have caught the outside corner. Throws it off the dugout wall and 
evens the count back out at 2-2. Two and two. It's funny, no action right now in the Goldie Beacom bullpen, but the Eagles are stretching their freshman righty, number 51, Jake Bauman. 2-2 two and two to Pavelcheck. that one misses out high. You can see Jump, he kind of motioned his hand the second he got rid of it, knowing that that one was a lost cause. And so a big opportunity here for Michael Pavelchak, the senior out of Nyack, New York, to reset the table. 3-2 pitch coming. Pavelchak slaps at it. Tough play in the hole. Wow, a great backhand by the second baseman, Walker. And he gets the out by a step. A 1-2-3 inning for Justin Jump when he needed it the most. And he gets it on three ground outs. Just nine pitches. And we will head to the top of the fifth with the Eagles up four to nothing. All right, and I am back. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. Here at Municipal Stadium, a leadoff single for Christian Petrillo on a base hit to right, but a huge play by the pitcher, Nick Seaman, helping his own cause. 
to get that second runner, the big, dangerous Braden Coleman'sberger, out on a bang bang play at first. I think the question was interference. The throw is there by a step, and it, it was a high throw from Seaman as he had to come in on that chopper. You have the tall first baseman, Corchado, who was able to reach up. He never left the bag. I think the question was, was he interfering with the base runner? Look at this. A corkscrew off the bat of Musi. The flip! They got him by a step. Hunter Keller, that's a tough play to make as the ball, he was protecting up the middle, not the hole. So the ball drags him to his left. He has to get it, keep going, but get the flip off, and it doesn't lose any momentum. Two huge ground outs thanks to some great defensive help. And once again, you have the leadoff runner threatening at third, but a chance for him to be left stranded. If you're just joining us, folks, the Eagles leading 4 to nothing, still shutting out the Goldie Beacom Lightning. 18 wins, 11 losses on the season. Thanks to some huge defensive help, there's a big swing on the pitch off the plate. But thanks to some huge defensive help and some timely outs, calling a spade a spade, Nick Seaman in four of these five innings now has gotten off to an early jam. This one ripped down the line. That's a fair ball, and that will be one across. As it's a big turn. Oh, and the ball gets past the left fielder, DJ Karen. And so it would have been a double anyway. There was a chance there to advance it to Moore. But Darren Miller, a timely big rip. And hold that thought about leaving base runners on the base paths. Goldie Beacom with a huge answer with the RBI double for Miller. And it's now a 4-1 to lead for the post-university Eagles. For Darren Miller, remember, he's second on the team in average. That'll bring him up to 390 on the season. Second on the team, now with 28 RBI. Just the third and fourth hits of the contest allowed by the sophomore right-hander Nick Seaman. Kyle Walker at second. Do we have a pinch runner? Is that... No, Miller's still at... Miller's still running at second, so didn't catch that with that little break. I don't know, Kristen, did you see anything there? No, so... No, just a nice little break in the action. And here is the second baseman, Kyle Walker. Wow, another funny-looking, softly-hit foul ball. This time, it's off the body of Walker before getting scooped up by Brennan. So the umpire will keep that ball in his pocket. Seaman gets a fresh one. Nick Seaman, it took him 73 pitches to get through four innings. And up until that point, he hadn't let a run come across. 16 pitches so far. So this will be his 90th pitch of the game right here. And that went just a little too far off the plate trying to set up Kyle Walker. Kyle in his senior season, the only player on the Goldie Beacom roster listed as both an infielder and an outfielder, true utility man. He's getting the start today at second base. Look at the fielding numbers here. I wonder if that kind of translates that way, if you will, for Kyle Walker. 72 put outs on the season. So he has plenty of opportunity to make plays in the field. Nick Seaman with a chance, another opportunity to get out of trouble. 2-2 pitch, 1-2 pitch, pardon me, pulls it wide, evens the count back out at 2-2. Two and two. It's number 51, Jake Bauman, still working in the bullpen for Post University, but... Right now, just doing some lawn toss because they're not going to need it the way Nick Seaman rolling right along. Seaman just strikes out his fifth batter of the afternoon. And the Eagles finally surrender a run, but get out of trouble without any more. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Eagles still up by three. It's post-university four. Goldie Beacom College one. More after this break on the Nest Network.
Welcome back to Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. My name is Chris Del Sordo, your post University Eagles into the bottom of the fifth, leading four to one. The two pitchers, Nick Seaman and Justin Jump, both still in this contest, and they really couldn't have had different, more different style of outings. Justin Jump is about to throw his 49th pitch, which means he's averaged 12 pitches an inning to get him up to this point, but he has surrendered six hits. And four runs scored. Meanwhile, Nick Seaman has thrown 90 pitches to get him across his five innings of work. And he's only allowed one run. But he's allowed four hits. And he's walked six batters. Now, he has struck out six as well. But the defense and some timely outs, really the difference between Justin Jump and Nick Seaman's day. And to Jump's credit, we've seen him kind of get more comfortable as this contest has gone on, it took him just nine pitches to get out of the bottom of the fourth. Three straight ground outs, and they kind of went around the horn. The first batter, Keller, grounded out third to first. Then Danny Gill grounded out shortstop to first. And then Michael Pavelchak grounded out to the second baseman. Well out in front, and that is a timely walk. To get the inning started there for Evan Cornwell, not what Justin Jump wanted to see right there, I believe. Yeah, that's the first walk surrendered by Justin Jump. He hadn't walked a batter up until that point. Meanwhile, Seaman, I said six, it was four. But Jump had total command of the strike zone. In fact, honestly, his problem was he was kind of finding too much of it. Now you have the speedy Cornwell on and Corchado, who already doubled off the wall in right center field and came around to score his last time up. Corchado is a perfect two for two on the day. He singled back in the first to right, doubled to deep right center and scored in the third. So... He's halfway on his way to a natural cycle and a chance here for some damage and said this is a dead duck double play ball. They get the out at second and they turn it. Oh my goodness. Four, six, three. And the Eagles quickly down to one out remaining here in the bottom of the fifth inning as Kyle Walker gets to a tough one, turns it quickly to Coleman'sberger, who gets the runner Corchado by a step. Four, six, three double play, a thing of beauty. And it brings up Jimmy Brennan. But all of a sudden, those base paths empty of Eagles. And a tough task now to try and keep this inning alive. Jump. Past the field, reinvigorated there with that big defensive play behind him. But too much off that breaking ball. It was right over the middle of the plate, but it misses low. And so now Brennan ahead in the count. 1-0. Swinging there, can't blame him. But he's out in front of it. And fouls it off. The Eagles dugout. Post University with that home dugout down the third baseline. That is standard practice. More unconventional to have the first base home dugout like the Red Sox do. Good eye here at the plate from Brennan as both of these balls that have missed have been right there on the corner. He's been able to show that, that discerning eye and he's ahead back in the count now 2-1. and one. Have to think Justin Jump isn't really going to give you many free passes. And Brennan lines that one. The only infielder on the right side of the infield was the first baseman, Musi, who puts the squeeze on it to get us out of the bottom of the fifth inning. Well, all of a sudden, Justin Jump, he has found the magic potion. Six batters up, six batters down across the last two half innings. We head to the top of the sixth inning. Remember, just a seven-inning game in these doubleheaders. So we head to the top of the sixth with the Eagles up three. It's post-university, four. Goldie Beacom College, one. Top of the six after this on the Nest Network.
Welcome back into Municipal Stadium here in Waterbury. My name is Chris Del Sordo, and your post University Eagles, two innings away from winning their 16th game of the season, and their eighth out of nine in conference play, and their sixth straight. But they do have the middle of the Goldie Beacom order in the form of Anthony Charles getting us started here to lead off the bottom of, or pardon me, the top of the sixth inning. Nick Seaman, the sophomore from New York, Misses that one outside, and so he's behind to Charles now, 2-0. and Still working, only allowing one run so far. It's taken him 90 pitches to get through the first five innings. He surrendered four walks. He's allowed four hits, but he struck out six, and he's had some timely defense behind him to hold this to a 3-1 lead. Three-run lead, pardon me. Charles walked in his first A-B. Struck out in a, after a very hard-fought A.B. Struck out on eight pitches to lead off the top of the fourth. That one catches the outside corner, and so Nick Seaman with a chance here to strike out his seventh batter of the afternoon. He might get Charles for a, the second time, and remember, this is a 386 hitter. The full count pitch misses up, and so Charles, he's answered that one strikeout with a walk on either side of it. And this is a dangerous part of the order. 6, 7, and 8. They've all shown the ability to have some pop. Harkins is up now. One of the better averages you were going to see for a catcher stationed at the bottom of the order. Coming into action today with a 258 average. This might do it for Nick Seaman. He's gone five innings, has only allowed one run. But he has walked five batters now, and he's up to his 96th pitch of the outing. Well, just trying to read the body language here. This is the manager, Ray Scold. Normally, when you see him head to the mound like that, you're going to think, okay, he's going to ask for the baseball and make the personnel change. But I think he wants to see Nick Seaman get himself a sixth-inning outing. 96 pitches be darned, and that's exactly what we're going to see right now. Seaman will stay in the game to face Nick Harkins. Harkins is a junior out of Newark, Delaware, studying business management as his major. I do love whenever the opposing school fills us in on, on what their players are majoring in here, and I haven't delved too far into that, but folks, we have a second game of a doubleheader this afternoon, so I'm sure to... Uh, We'll talk a little bit more about what these guys are studying here. Harkins at the dish, the business management major in his junior season out of Newark, Delaware. First pitch swinging and a timely pop-up. Rivera, he's going to get called off by his shortstop. Cornwell, who puts the squeeze on it. Just a thing of beauty. Smooth play by Cornwell. Exactly what you needed if you're the Eagles getting the batter Harkins to swing at the first pitch. He pops out to the shortstop. And now Demetrius Johnson, who is engaged in two extended at that battles against Nick Seaman. The Lightning are going to want to see him do that again here in his third AB of the game. The runner goes, pop up throw. That was a great jump from Charles. Wasn't the quickest throw from the catcher Brennan. And the throw wasn't in the best spot, but that's a tall man in Charles. So you got to think those strides from the six foot three inch runner, they're getting him to second base that much quicker. Good slide too. Charles is now two for two on stolen bases today, folks. He is 11 of 12 on the season. And so Seaman answers that one with another strike on the outside corner. This will be the 100th pitch of the afternoon for Nick Seaman. And he has a chance for strikeout number seven. Instead, I think he hits Johnson. No. All right. Didn't clip the jersey. Seaman lives another pitch in this at bat, and the count is back even at 2-2. Two and two. Runner goes, and they're not even going to worry about that run right now as Charles takes third with no throw. He is 3-for-3. Three three. Stolen bags on the day, and yes, that makes him now 12 of 13 on the year. 2-2 two, two pitch again, and a swing and a miss! Some elevated heat! The high fastball gets Johnson late. And so for the first time today, but the, against Johnson, but the seventh time today in total, looks like we have a pinch hitter coming in here for Goldie Beacom. The seventh strikeout pitched by Nick Seaman. 
So pinch hitting for Goldie Beacom College, Dante D. Sabatino, a junior out of Middletown, Delaware, transferred in from Cecil County Community College. Seaman going to work quickly here with D. Sabatino in the box, and he misses up and away. Your runner at third, Anthony Charles, who led off this inning with a walk, stole second, and stole third. D. Sabatino, his 22nd at-bat of the year, and he takes that one. It just barely catches the outside corner to even the count back out at 1-1. One one. Dante, 4 of 21. It has his average at 190, so a knock here. That gets him over the Mendoza line. And he gets just that at the left fielder, but not having to move is DJ Karen. He puts the squeeze on it and gets us out of trouble. Nick Seaman over the century mark, but six solid innings of work. He only allows one run. They might have bought him enough time to maybe try and make this a complete game. But we are out of trouble here, headed to the bottom of the sixth inning at Municipal Stadium. The Eagles up three. It's four to one. We're back here in the bottom of the sixth inning. My name is Chris Del Sordo calling the action for you today on the Nest Network. Nick Seaman, one of his quickest innings of work, just 10 pitches to get out of the bottom of the sixth inning. In total, Nick is at 100 total pitches on the afternoon. And we head to the bottom of the sixth inning for the Eagles. One more chance at some insurance, and they get another look at Justin Jump. He is still on the mound now, a very low pitch count. Let's reset this here. Yeah, very low pitch count for Justin Jump. It took him just 56 pitches to get through the first five innings of work. So the two afternoons couldn't have gone more differently for Jump and Seaman in terms of strike zone control. Seaman has walked four batters and struck out eight. Jump has yet to walk an eagle. That's a big swing right there from the bat of DJ Karen. Yet to walk an eagle, and he has struck out four, but that ball has just been right there over the heart of the plate all day long. Six hits surrendered. Karen vying for seven, but this is right at the right fielder, Matt Benner. Has to take just literally one step to his left before squeezing it for the first out of the bottom of the sixth. Justin Rivera, 0 for 2 today. He struck out looking on three pitches his first time up and then popped out to the first baseman on the very first pitch of his second at bat. So one of the few Eagles with uh, not a lot of good to report so far out of game one, but a good eye here, and he's ahead in the count now, 1-0. and Big swing, and that'll even the count back out at 1-1. One and one. Justin Rivera, the, the cover athlete for the Eagles in this contest today. Starting in his 27th game, he started in every game he's played in. Coming into action today with a 260 average. That one misses up and in, and so it puts Rivera ahead in the count 
on Justin Jump, two and one. So now Rivera ahead in the count two and one as Jump tried to bust him inside and it opens Rivera up deep to right center but on the read is Benner and the second batter in a row, the impressive out. I thought that that one got a little bit more, pardon me, a little bit more off the bat of Rivera and the wind is blowing out to right field but Benner makes up the ground and an 0 for 3 outing so far for Rivera. It's Jalen Kelly up for his third A-B of the contest. Great pitch there from Jump to start off Kelly with a strike on the outside corner. Kelly was hit by a pitch his first time up. And he went around there. Well, let's see, did he go around there? Yes, he did, and so that makes the count 0-2. Yeah, was hit by a pitch his first time up, then struck out looking to end the bottom of the third. Big swing here off the end of the bat, falling fast in the gap, and it will drop in front of the left fielder, Demetrius Johnson. Timely hit there for Kelly. If nothing else, it just means one more batter needing to be faced by Justin Jump. And so Kelly, with the base hit, I believe that puts him into double digits hit-wise. It's going to be his eighth hit of the season. His average now up over the 250 mark. It jumps to 255 for Jalen Kelly with that base hit. So down to the eight-hole hitter, Hunter Keller. Remember, we're playing seven innings in each of these games today, so this could be the final go-around at the dish for the Eagles. Big swing from Keller there. He comes up empty. And he'll fall behind in the count 0-1. Mentioned Keller and Gill. Those two players, 8-9 and nine in the lineup, that just bring so much plus play defensively. You look past the, the lacking offensive numbers. 167 and 159 respectively. Keller did ground out his first time up. This one, tough play. It's going to be the second baseman. And wow, Hunter, or pardon me, Kyle Walker, Kyle Walker robbing Hunter Keller as he almost got into his first baseman, Garrett Musey, there, but he puts the squeeze on it. And so, who's going to come out to close this contest in the top of the seventh inning? The Eagles with a chance to win their 16th of the year when we come back, leading 4-1. to one. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. My name is Chris Del Sordo, and you're post-University Eagles, three outs away from recording their seventh, pardon me, their sixth straight win, their eighth conference win, and their 16th win of the season. It's going to be the freshman pitcher, Jake Bauman, in to try and close this one out for the Eagles. Jake O'Reilly out of Delran, New Jersey, went to Delran High School, stands 5'11", 180. So not going to just intimidate you with size up there, but some tough stuff for the young right-handed pitcher. Jake making his seventh appearance in his freshman season. He has two saves on the year, and this is going to be a save situation. 1-0, and oh, so one win for Bauman. 7.04 ERA. He has allowed 10 hits in his eight innings of work. He has allowed six runs across those eight innings, all six of them earned. He has struck out four, but has walked five. So the stuff is there. It's a question of location for Jake Bauman, and this is a big game scenario right now. It is a three-run lead, but 
This Goldie Beak Beakum lineup. I'm gonna get that right by the end of the doubleheader today, folks. This is a lineup that came into action today, hitting 300. Yes, an even 300. Only four hits so far. Can't think that you're going to keep these bats down for that much longer. And so Bauman now, an opportunity for his third save in as many opportunities, but he's got the top of the Goldie Beacom order to get through. And it starts off with the center fielder, Christian Petrillo. Christian Petrillo, one for three. Pardon me. Yes, one for two. Walked in his first at bat. Then flew out to right in his second and singled to right his most recent time up, leading off the top of the fifth. Here's our first look at the freshman from Delran, New Jersey, Jake Bauman. And he's greeted with one laced back up the middle, but right at the center fielder Gill. And Danny Gill calmly going back to his left. Makes the catch in deep right center. So one pitch, one out for Christian Petrillo. That's got to feel good. And now just two outs remaining for the Lightning in this contest. It's the two-hole hitter, Braden Coleman'sberger. Two for three so far on the day. Singled to right in the first inning. Doubled to left in the third. He was stranded both of those times. Bauman, some some good velocity there, but that pitch misses low and away. Brennan does a solid job smothering it. The line on Nick Seaman has gone final. He has thrown 103 pitches. Only one run su surrendered. It was earned. Swing there. It looks like the batter went around. Yes, he did, and so it's an even count back now at 1-1. One and one. My apologies here. So for Seaman, 103 pitches, one run it was earned, only surrendering four hits. He walked five, but he struck out seven. So what an outing for the sophomore here. As this bunt's laid down, Brennan gets to it. Oh, wow, and some miscommunication there between Brennan and Bowman. And the base runner on the play, Coleman'sberger, had no idea that ball got thrown away the way it did. Brennan in pain right now. As you can see, he jumps on that ball I think our camera, you can see via our camera, but he has a hand cast on the bottom part of his hand and his wrist. He calls off his pitcher, Bauman, who is also trying to make a play on the baseball. Brennan, the catcher, dives on it, tries to spin and throw it to first. Something happened with that right hand. The ball slipped right out of his hand. Coleman'sberger originally held it first, the umpire ruled that the ball went out of play on the throwing error. So if you have all that, folks, the runner does advance after he beats out, I, I believe that's an infield single, and I we'll see, but then the, then the throw allows Coleman'sberger to advance to second. Either way, it is a runner in scoring position with one out. They were an inch away from putting Goldie Beacom down to their final out. Instead, now Garrett Musey, the 433 hitter. Not only does he get an A-B here in the seventh inning, but he gets one with a runner in scoring position. Bauman gets his sign. Brennan sets up on the outer half. Runner goes. Right there, you can see the throw is conceded right now. Three straight consecutive stolen bases for Goldie Beacom College. Braden Coleman'sberger, his second of the afternoon, so he is now 9 for 10 on the year. And this puts a sack fly RBI very much in play right now. Have to think post, they'll take that here. As remember, we're in the seventh, we're playing seven here as this is game one of a doubleheader. That one misses outside and as nice as it is to, to play that hypothetical game and think, okay, we can afford to put Musi on, well, then you're at the clean cleanup hitter with two on. You bring the tying run to the plate, and that's the exact scenario we're going to have right now. Musi walks on four pitches. So that shows you how, how big a good defense behind you can be. The Eagles, if Brennan's able to get that throw to first and get Coleman'sberger... They're down to their last out. Instead, they still have to record two outs. 
Coleman's at third. Musie's at first. And a discussion here with Jake Bauman. Remember, Christian Petrillo led off this, the top of the seventh inning, for the Lightning. Swinging on the first pitch, and he lifts it right to the center fielder, Danny Gill. And at that point, it just seemed like with the way that everybody was cruising right along here at Municipal Stadium, it felt like not a foregone conclusion, but, but a much easier path to get the Eagles out of this contest. Now you have their second best hitter average-wise, Darren Miller, at the dish. This is a 382 hitter. I believe he's one for three today. That he is. But his most recent time up, he's the reason that the Lightning have a run scored. Most recent time up, an RBI double to the wall, which made it 4-1 to one post. So now you have Miller, and let's just call a spade a spade. He's the tying run right now. It's a big outfield. You put anything into play, you have to think Coleman's burger at third is going to score. So the Eagles hoping, praying for a ground ball right now, and that's a great way to get started. Bauman dots the outside corner low and away. Darren Miller coming into action, hitting 382. One for three today. And that double that he just drove in that run on, his 40th hit of the season. So now 40 of 105, that puts him right there at that 390 ballpark. Bauman does not want to just allow Musi to take second. Remember, that double plays in order. If you can turn two, this ball game is over. Musi, one of the few Lightning without fleet feet. He's only attempted one stolen base. He was caught stealing in his one attempt. This one swung on, hit well, deep right center. Pavel check back. Pavel check looks up, and it is gone. Out of here, a game tying three run home run for Darren Miller. His second hit of the game, his third home run of the season, RBI 28 29 and 30. Miller has all four RBI in this contest. It's a big ballpark. The wind is blowing out to right, but he got every last stitch of that, and we're tied at four apiece. Well, let's see. Here's a big cornerstone moment in the career of the young pitcher Jake Bauman. He comes in. Nick Seaman cannot get the win in this contest anymore. And now Bauman has to face another solid hitter, the senior five-hole man playing second base today, Kyle Walker. Walker is 0 for 3 today. He has struck out twice. What type of mental fortitude does Bauman have here as he pulls this one outside? And the count 2-0. and oh. Well, exactly what you don't want to see right here is let Kyle Walker on via a base on balls. There you go. You get him to swing and miss at that one. He's a player with a, a, a solid average. In fact, right around 300 coming into action today. But he struck out twice already. Hasn't shown the best ability to put bat to ball, at least today, coming to Municipal Stadium. Grounds this one. Great play there by Rivera. Throw across the diamond is scooped out of trouble by Corchado. And there's a nice recovery out from Bauman for out number two. Seaman had done such a good job keeping the ball on the ground. Seven fly ball outs recorded. Five ground ball outs recorded. Charles with a huge swing on that first pitch and he fouls it straight back. He was right on top of it. And just barely missed it. Charles walked to get the top of the sixth inning started. Technically 0 for 1 today with a strikeout, but he has walked to reach base safely twice. Another big swing. This time he misses everything. And so Jake Bauman can flip the script here. He can get himself quickly out of trouble. 
and just give the Eagles a little bit of momentum to head in to the bottom of the seventh with. The 0-2 pitch to Anthony Charles. Breaking ball and a nice job there by number six, the left-handed hitter in his sophomore season. Not looking like an underclassman there. He was able to read that breaking ball and stay on it to extend this A-B one more pitch. Bauman about to throw his 15th pitch of the inning. Misses high. Charles was able to keep the bat on the shoulder. Charles, his walk today was his 15th of the season. 15th and 16th. His one strikeout bringing him up to 12 on the year. That one. Out in front of it, and he's able to Q-tip it off to the third base side. So we'll do it again with the count 1 and 2. Bauman came into action with a 7.04 ERA. It's going to jump now after that three-run home run. That one misses high, and so Charles, in spite of falling behind early in the count, able to stay patient. And we'll do it again with a count two and two. Bauman waits. Brennan sets up inside. That one misses low. You could see the body language from Brennan. He wanted that call from the home home plate umpire. Couldn't get it. Playing with fire here. Last thing you want to do is have Charles on. He's three for three stealing bases so far today. Bauman waits. That one inside. It's fought off by Charles. That one's actually up over the netting. And a nice catch by a post-university fan On one hop, just kind of casually sees it coming, snags it. He has it tossed back into the Goldie Beacom dugout. Hey, so the fans making plays too here at Municipal Stadium. The count is full. Charles, kind of deep down in the lower crouch now that we're full in the count. Bauman waits. Brennan sets up on the outside corner and misses low and in. Oh, that pitch, a lot of good bite on it from Bauman. But it started middle in, it misses inner half, and now Nick Harkins, the junior catcher, has a runner on. And this game, extras aren't a sure thing at this point. you got to still get out of this inning if you're post-university. If you're just joining us, three runs surrendered by post here in the top of the seventh. It was six innings pitched, 103 total pitches for Nick Seaman. He struck out seven, allowed just one run. Jake Bauman coming in to get the close, his third save opportunity. He gets the first runner, Petrillo, the first batter, Petrillo, out on a flyout. But then Coleman'sberger with a bunt single, Musi with a walk, and it leads to the big blow, a three-run home run to right center field for Darren Walker. New pitcher in for the Eagles. And that looks to be number 61, Alexander Galvin. So the Beacons pulling the lefty from the left coast to try and get them out of the top of the second. Pardon me, against Goldie Beacom. So we'll take a quick break here as Galvin has his conversation at the mound with head coach Ray Scold. He'll take his warm-up pitches, and we'll be right back on the Nest Network after this. It's the top of the seventh inning. We're tied up at four apiece.
Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. My name is Chris Del Sordo. You are watching Post University Baseball on the Nest Network. It's number 61, Alexander Galvin, coming in to just try and get Post out of the top of the seventh inning. Galvin, a junior out of Los Angeles, California. He went to West Los Angeles College, same college that gave the Eagles Danny Gill. Galvin coming into action with numbers kind of similar to Jake Bauman. 0-1 on the season. This is his fifth appearance. Coming into action with an 8.62 ERA. So Anthony Charles on at first after the walk. His third walk so far of the afternoon. And now Nick Harkins. 0-2 for 2 today. Back up here for the Goldie Beacom College Lightning. Post University scoring in the bottom of the first, taking a 1-0 lead. Three more across in the bottom of the third had them sitting pretty with a 4-0 lead, which it felt like this game was kind of destined to sit at 4-1 after Goldie Beacom did score on a Darren Miller double to make it a 4-1 game in the top of the fifth, but it looked like we were just kind of going to cruise on through this game with that as our final line. Not the case. As the throw over from Galvin doesn't warrant a tag. Not the case at all. Bauman comes in. Jake Bauman comes in to spell Nick Seaman to start this, the top of the seventh inning, which felt like just like a different day <laughs> at this point. He gets the first batter out, but allows the next two on, one with an infield bunt, one with a four-pitch walk, and then it's right back to the man, Darren Miller, who beat you with that double back in the fifth inning. And he absolutely tanks one. It was out over the outer half of the plate. Goes opposite field right over the 382-foot sign in deep right center. This one's cue balled off the end of the bat. It's going to be scooped up by Corchado in foul ground. And so quickly, Harkins is behind to Galvin 0-2. But remember, there, there was still just one out in the inning after that home run was allowed. Bauman stays in. He's able to get Kyle Walker to ground out that next A-B. But then he walks Anthony Charles on six pitches. And so they pull Bauman and they bring in Alexander Galvin. Nick Seaman cannot factor into the decision today. Bauman can lose this game. He is responsible for Charles. And they finally got the pickoff play to work. Can they get the throw in time? No, he is just that fast. Anthony Charles safe at second. They had the man dead to rights. He was picked off, but just showing you the speed. A perfect four for four day on the base paths. Has another lightning runner back in scoring position. And Charles now. Four for four on the day. 13 of 14 on the season. He has done so much damage on the base paths. And he's yet to record a hit, folks. Four stolen bases today. Thanks to three walks. Now Galvin, I think, more focused on the task at hand because it's a different different territory all of a sudden. Charles is a fast runner, and he's in scoring position on second base. Harkins, a 260 hitter with eight RBI on the season. You can't fall asleep at the wheel here and put one over the plate. Ten will make you pay. One-two pitch. It looked like they had Charles leading again. They decide not to attempt the throw. I mean, they, they had him picked off two, two pitches ago, but he just won the race to the bag as Corchado had to spin a little bit, had to place the ball there on the throw down. One and two, and that one misses inside to bring the count even to two and two. And so you had so many different opportunities if you're post to get yourself out of the inning. Now... You have a base runner on second that's that's doing plenty of dancing. He's worrying your defense and your pitcher. And you have a hitter, a right-handed hitter, that does very well against left-handed pitching. So Post not making it any easier on themselves here. 2-2 Two -two pitch. That one misses away. And you can see Galvin a little animated all of a sudden, having trouble here finding the strike zone. Harkins comes set. Galvin comes set. Brennan setting up on the outer half of the plate. 3-2 pitch. Spoiled. Missed wide and 
You can see Brennan was setting up on the outside corner of the plate, but he wasn't setting up that far outside. Believes this... Yeah, this is Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson, with some battles so far this afternoon, he's yet to record a hit, but he's had extended ABs all three times to the plate. He walked in the second, flew out in the fourth, and struck out swinging in the sixth. You can see this home plate umpire now has to keep it keep it firm on that strike zone. That one just barely misses outside, but the ball is given. Nick Seaman allowed five walks. Oh, dangerous throw down there as Corchado was able to dive and keep it in front of him. Two different approaches pitching-wise here. As Goldie Beacom has only surrendered one walk, and that was in the most recent half inning. Justin Jump was just completely all over the strike zone. Seaman was able to survive his outing with five walks, but the most two recent have caused some trouble. Here's the throw down. Did they get him? Not in time. That was the closest play we've had up to this point, but Anthony Charles still perfect on the base paths. He's five for five today. He has 14 stolen bases on the season, and now danger for Post University. Gotta worry about the reality here of a wild pitcher, a pass ball, and that would give Goldie Beacom College the lead. That's why they kept Justin Jump in the whole game, is he might hit the pitcher's mound with a chance to win this game on a complete game, which is just crazy to think about, especially back in the third inning when the Eagles made it, at that time, 4 to nothing. Johnson is ahead in the count now, 3-0. and oh. I have to think they're probably just going to spoil him right here. No, instead, it's a get-me-over fastball. It is right over the heart of the plate. Johnson didn't have the green light. And so Galvin gets one back, but he still has plenty of work to do here. Anthony Charles, arguably the fastest player on the Lightning team at third. Harkins takes off. That pitch misses outside. Johnson is on for his second walk of the day. The eighth walk drawn by Goldie Beacom hitters. And now... Here's a pinch hitter. Our first look at number 28, Mitch Jalico. What a time to enter the game here. Bases loaded, tie ball game, top of the last inning, and it's a righty getting a favorable matchup against the lefty. Four walks so far this inning already surrendered by Post University, and we might have another pitcher coming in, and that we will. It is going to be the third different pitcher of the inning. The fourth used in total by the Eagles and just trying to catch the back of that jersey. And there we go. Marshall Thurman, the senior righty from Conroe, Texas. Your next man in to try and end the bleeding. Solid numbers out of the bullpen for Thurman. A 4.5 ERA. This will be his sixth appearance of the season. He has struck out five across four innings of work. We'll take another quick break. It's still tied somehow. The Eagles in a world of trouble right now, but they still could get out of it. We'll be right back here. It's the top of the seventh inning. Two outs, and we're tied at four apiece.
So we're back here at Municipal Stadium. Mitch Jalico, the pinch hitter, coming up here for Goldie Beacom College. Mitch is a junior out of Middletown, Delaware. Went to Lackawanna College before making it to GBC. Marshall Thurman, the pitcher here for the Eagles, and that's a great way to get your evening started. A tough late breaker catching the inside corner, and Thurman is ahead of Jalico, 0-1. Four of the last five hitters have reached base via walk, and how about that? A hit batter with the bases loaded gives Goldie Beacom the lead. Thurman, through a first pitch strike, has the 4.5 ERA. I'm going to check. I don't think he's hit any batters this season. No, and so for the first time this season, Thurman hits a batter, and it comes with the bases loaded, and it puts Goldie Beacom up 5-4. to four. Mitch Jalico, his sixth RBI of the year. You'll take them however they come. Back up to the top of the order, and Petrillo now, who led off this inning with a flyout to dead center field on the first pitch, probably never would have thought he'd be here in this spot. With his lightning leading all of a sudden 5-4, to four, he's out in front of that one and swings and misses. So a good recovery there for Marshall Thurman, but it's all going to come down to the bottom of the 7th. 9-1-2 and two due up for the Eagles, so that's what you want to see in the lineup. Still got to get out of trouble here. 0-2 pitch to Petrillo. Hard ground ball. Cornwell makes the play at 2nd, and so a 6-4 put out to end the damage. But the damage certainly done. Four runs on just two hits, but the four walks a big part of it. And Goldie Beacom heads to the bottom of the seventh inning, a chance to put this game away, leading 5-4. to four. We'll have the bottom of the seventh right after this on the Nest Network. Well, four innings ago, I don't think any of us would have thought this would be possible, that Justin Jump still on the mound with a chance to close out a complete game win. The one thing he has done is found a strike zone and worked quickly. Only 69 pitches thrown through six innings. This next pitch thrown will be his 70th. But it looked like he was going to take the loss to Nick Seaman, who... Only allowed one run and struck out five. But it took him 103 pitches to get through his six innings of work. And when the Eagles handed it off to the bullpen, that's when they found all of their trouble. It ultimately came to a head in the form of a game-tying three-run home run by Darren Miller. And then a go-ahead RBI hit by pitch by Mitch Jalico. This was going to be the spot for Danny Gill. Instead, it is the freshman. Pinch hitter, number 30, Brian Zwigbaum. Zwigbaum, out of Smithtown, New York. He's a D1 transfer from the University of Maine. And so Justin Jump, that was his 70th pitch of the contest. It misses inside for a ball. Just the 20th ball thrown of the afternoon for Justin Jump compared to 50 and now make it 51 strikes. He's been working quickly. He's been catching plenty of the plate. Zwigbaum doesn't like that one. It looked to be there, though, and the count back even at 1-1. One one. 
jump, waves off to the catcher, goes with the next pitch, and likes that second call. It's an off-speed pitch that has Zawig Bomb out in front. Brian, with his 38th plate appearance on the season, he has six hits and three RBI. The one-two pitch from Justin Jump. Oh, it's a breaking ball. So Wigbaum couldn't keep the bat on his shoulder. That one was juicy as it was running away from him. And the Eagles down to their last two outs. It's the leadoff hitter, Michael Pavelchak, back up. Pavelchak singled and scored back in the bottom of the first. He is then grounded out to second in each of his next two ABs. That one misses away from Justin Jump. I want to make sure I have this right. Just one walk issued to a post batter. And that runner was quickly doubled off on the base path. So Jump behind Pavelchak 2-0 here. What a what a time it would be for that big walk number two, maybe, for Justin Jump. That one on the outside corner. Pavelchak offered at it. The umpire calling it a strike regardless. So Jump gets one back. Two and one pitch on the way. That one's chopped out. It's going to be a tough play for Miller at third. He's on it quickly. Comes up firing and gets Pavelchak by a step. And it's all going to come down to the shortstop, Evan Cornwell. An ultimate what could have been type of baseball game here. But it's down to the switch hitter, Cornwell. He's going to take this at bat from the left side. Justin Jump, a chance to finish off a seven-inning complete game, and he misses that one up and in. If he is able to finish this outing, he will have to thank, really himself, keeping it right over the strike zone. This is the 79th pitch of the contest for Jump. That one misses away. So Cornwell, he looks to have this strike zone pretty well calibrated from the left side of the batter's box here. We have some high clouds at Municipal Stadium, but the sun burning right through those. Looks like a beautiful day here. Remember, we still have another 7 inning game to go. Oh, that pitch didn't look to be over the plate, but the umpire gives it the outside corner. You can see Cornwell and the post dugout, none too thrilled with that, but nothing's going to be easy at this point. Can't assume anything. Two and one pitch. That one also catches the inside corner, and that's what giving that outside strike does as Cornwell was kind of selling out to be able to reach those any pitch that's on the outside corner. Jump dots him inside, and now Justin Jump on his 81st pitch, a chance to put it away, and it is tipped. Just barely keeping this game alive. Honestly, if you're Cornwell, you could have acted like <laughs> you never touched that one, and the catcher, Harkins, couldn't see the baseball. That would have gotten you onto first base safely. I think Cornwell probably would rather opt to reach a more conventional route. He doubled back in the bottom of the third inning. Eagles would love something like that right here. The 2-2 pitch coming from Justin Jump. Misses outside. Harkins doing his darndest to frame it, but the momentum... I think actually pulled Harkins that much further off the plate. So the count goes full here. Remember, Justin Jump has just walked one batter today. What an opportunity here if the Eagles can make it two. 3-2 pitch coming. Swung on and missed. And Justin Jump goes a complete game, striking out six batters. He surrenders seven hits, but survives with just four runs allowed. And just three of them earned. Today's final score in game number one. The Goldie Beacom College Lightning, five. The Post-University Eagles, four. For the Lightning, five runs on six hits, no errors. For the Eagles, four runs on seven hits and no errors. Justin Jump will get the complete game win. It took him just 82 pitches to go the seven-inning distance. And once again, remember, he struck out six batters in the process. 
Nick Seaman was in line for the win. Instead, Jake Bauman is going to surrender the loss coming in and allowing that three-run home run to Darren Miller. The next batter, Charles, he walked him as well. Charles comes around to score, and that's what does it for us in game number one. So we've gone final, but remember, don't fret. Seven more innings of baseball to come up here at Municipal Stadium, and so a whole nother chance for the Eagles to wash out the horrible taste of game number one with the win. Goldie Beacom, 19-11 and 11 across their first 30 games now, and that's a timely win in conference play. They go back to 5-3 and three in the CACC. With the loss, the Eagles are now at 500 on the season. They're at 15-15, and 15. and really, a spoke in the wheel. Like a stick stuck into that, that bicycle wheel. It was a well-oiled machine. Now you're going to have to stop and think about this a little bit as they call, fall back to reality, 7-2 and two in conference. And so that will do it for us for game number one. You can go anywhere you want. Just don't go too far. The game's scheduled to start at 4. Honestly, probably might get off a little bit closer to 345, 350. So come back in a half hour here. We'll have that next broadcast started for you by 345, definitely around 340. Don't go far. Got seven more innings of baseball here. The Eagles looked good. They surrendered the loss, but they do have a chance to split this doubleheader. So we will rejoin you in a half hour on the Nest Network. For the time being, my name is Chris Del Sordo. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for Game 1. You have watched post-university baseball on the CACC Network. And a reminder, you can watch all post-university games live on YouTube at Go Post Eagles. Thanks so much. We'll see you again in 30 minutes for Game 2.